Hello and welcome to this, the next uh, video in our series on using NIST DTSA2. In this particular video, we're going to discuss um, how to use the material editor. The material editor is an important tool that's used throughout the program to allow you to define the composition and density of materials. That's important when you're defining uh, the composition for a standard. It's also important when you are defining the uh, uh, a, a simulation, the material you wish to use for a simulation. So it's used throughout the program. So for this example we're just going to go and do a, a simulation and we're going to do an analytical model of a bulk homogeneous material. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and edit and uh, um, start from a, a blank uh, material editor. So the material editor uh, works like the following. It's, it's attached to a database. So the database um, allows you to uh, define materials and store them away and then reuse them. So anytime that you create a material, you should give it a name. So a good name is something like uh, K309, which uh, um, has no spaces and no pluses or minuses or, or oddball characters in it. So basically the, a good name has, has just uh, letters and numbers in it and generally starting with a letter. Um, so um, in this case this class we've looked at before in some of the other videos and uh, this as you may recall is uh, the composition of that uh, as uh, given by the, uh, by the manufacturing of the material. Um, so that's one way you can do it, and the, probably the most common way that uh, this material editor is used. So enter the material in once, and then just recall it from the database. When it recalls the composition, it also recalls the density. So the density of a glass is typically somewhere around 3.5, 4, uh, and so I just guessed at this one because I don't happen to know it, so I just said 4. Um, so Okay, another mode of operation. Well, you can enter in uh, uh, chemical formulas, so SiO2, for example. And when we hit the search, it's actually going to parse that. So it knows that uh, this is a one atom of silicon for every two atoms of oxygen. You have to be careful about capitalization, because if I typed in SiO2, alternatively capitalized with Si both capitalized, you would end up with sulfur and iodine. So um, be sure to capitalize the first letter of each uh, element's abbreviation and, uh, and uh, lowercase the, uh, any, the second letter, if there, if there is one. Okay, so um, one, one thing to remember too is that actually when it does parse that, it actually looks first in the database. And the reason for this is that uh, uh, I previously defined that SiO2 had a density of 2.65 uh, grams per cubic centimeter, and so it remembers that. Um, the gotcha on this is that if you misdefine something, define it wrong, then uh, you may think you've typed the formula incorrectly here, but it goes back to the database and gets the wrong one, the one that's uh, stored in the database incorrectly. So you, you got to be careful to make sure that you don't type in things wrong. It can do more sophisticated formulas too, so calcium uh, apatite, for example, uh, is uh, Ca5PO4 taken three times, and then we'll take the fluoro version of that, which is fluoroapatite, and there, so it parses that. So it's five atoms of calcium for every three atoms of phosphorus, 12 atoms of oxygen and one atom of fluorine. Okay, so that's uh, a more sophisticated way. Um, you can also do things like this. You can take mixtures. So if I wanted to do oxide fractions, I could do 0.3 times SiO2 plus 0.5 times Al2O3 and plus 0.2 times FeO, for example. You notice that these uh, constants actually sum to 1 so that we get a mass fraction of, a of, of unity. So um, there you go. So that's good for uh, de defining things that are uh, in terms of, uh, of uh, oxide uh, fractions. It also works for pure elements, so you could do 0.5 times 
aluminum. And this is by mass, 0.5 times uh, chlorine, let's say. Not that that's really anything, but uh, uh, it would do 0.5 and 0.5 like that. So it's, it's, it's a flexible way to enter in. And it's actually exactly analogous to uh, uh, entering things in down here. So one of, one of the little gotchas is sometimes you can unintentionally have it look stuff up in the database. And so to avoid having it do that, I just type and use the name unknown. So uh, let's say AL 40% uh, and O 60%. Something like that, and uh, you can enter in arbitrary uh, mass fractions in that way. One of the things you'll notice, I can delete that from there, is that it automatically uh, tells you how much material you have left over. So AL would be like that. All right, so it's pretty flexible in that way. So uh, let's let's use that uh, mechanism to enter in the material that I want to analyze right now. So I want to do a, uh, a special uh, NIST SRM steel that's 17.8 percent chrome. Uh, manganese is uh, 1.59. Uh, Molly is 2.19. Nickel is 12.47. And silicon is 0.52. I could have actually or also entered in by atomic number, but uh, that seems to be a little less convenient than entering in the abbreviation. And then it tells me how much I've left over, 65%, and I'm going to make that all iron. So I'm going to give this a name, SRM 1155A. That's a nice uh, friendly database-friendly name. And I'll say that the density is about uh, Typical for stainless steel is about 7.8 to 8 grams. So I'll choose 8 for this example and then click OK. So it says that I'm uh, about to simulate that. Um, so let's say I'd uh, go back here, change the material, go to K309. Great. Looks it up. SRM 1155A. Looks it up. Great. Let's say I wanted to change this from 8, the high end of the steels, to 7.9, the average of steels. Um, now when I click OK, it's going to ask me, do you really want to redefine the material? So we haven't changed any of the mass fractions, but we have changed the density. And do I want to update this in the database? Sure, yeah, I do. So I go ahead and do that. So um, I've shown you a number of the different ways that you can work with this uh, material database. Uh, I'm sure you can find one that works for you. We'll just carry on through with the simulation. Um, just use the default the detector that I use quite frequently, beam energy probe dose. Set those up here. And uh, we want to apply simulated count statistics. We want to do all the simulation modes. And there it goes. Done and we get our simulation. Now, one of the ways we can use that material definition is over here in the KLM dialog box. If I type the name in, type Control Enter, hey, it looks it up in the database, and it places all the appropriate line markers uh, for the elements it sees in the definition in the database. So the database name uh, is useful in many different places. Anyway, I hope you, this has given you a flavor as how to use the, uh, the database and the material editor. Thanks for your attention.